Okay, everyone. Hello. Um, if you missed the video before this, um, the praise report, the testimony of what God did for me today, um, check that out and also check out the description box. Um, the description box will also um, kind of tell you guys about why I had to kind of wait to do this video as well. But God is good. What I want to do, guys, is pray. I'm going to do announcements. I'm going to try to be on this video for like 15, 20 minutes. The rain has died down and I did have to charge up my phone. Um, it's like 20 something percent and then I got to go pick up my son. So um, we're going to come on, do Bible study and also pray for this upcoming week. We're on a new week, but just pray. I'm about to pray now. Then we'll read Ezekiel chapter 5 and 6. This is actually day 3 of our November Bible study. And I guess for the announcements, guys, I can just put them in the description box. So make sure you check out the description box as well. But let's begin to pray by your heads with me. Heavenly Father, Rosha Namaste, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We thank you for being such a great, awesome, gracious God. God, we thank you for touching minds and hearts right now today. God, we just want to repent corporately on behalf of Father God. We want to corporately come together and repent, Father God. Father God, any door or window that needs to be shut, shut it. And any door or window that needs to be open, open it, Father God. Father God, we plead the blood of Jesus over our lives. We plead the blood of Jesus over, Father God, everything connected to us, everyone connected to us, God. God, we thank you for blessing and covering our souls, our spirits, our finances, our bodies, our physical worlds, our relationships, our family, friends, and loved ones, our destiny, our purpose, our spirit, our spiritual walk and journey in you with the name and blood of Jesus. God, excuse me, we speak Isaiah 54, 17 no weapon i'm going to show it to you guys even though i could even though i could quote it and say it, i want you to see it as well so if you feel that to release this out of your own mouth make sure that you release this as well isaiah 54 17 no weapon forged against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and this is their vindication from me declares the lord claim that isaiah 54 17 also we're going to go to psalms 91 verse 3 in Jesus name which uh, Psalms 91 verse 3 says surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence we claim all of Psalms chapter 91 in the mighty name of Jesus and we're going to claim also Psalms 23 in the name of Jesus says hallelujah the Lord is my shepherd I shall not be in want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he restores my soul he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me your riding your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And although we just read Psalms 91 a few days ago, I'm feeling led to, to release this again as a prayer. All of it word for word in Jesus name. So he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Hallelujah. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm, somebody say no harm, will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And the last one that we're going to read before we get into Bible study, but this is a part of our prayer as well, is Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 is a word for someone as well. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing the new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and springs in the wasteland. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, if you are in agreement with this prayer, or if you want to, you know, for who you're standing in the gap for, in Jesus' name we be praying. Amen. So guys, now we're going to get into Ezekiel. That's our prayer for this week. You guys know, if you look at the channel, we're big on prayer. We got the prayer line. There's lots and lots of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on this channel of prayers. We're big on prayer with everything that we're doing. So prayer is powerful. Prayer is is something that we have to do, especially as Christians. Now, where's Ezekiel? I'm sorry, guys. Is it up this way? We gotta. We, it's important for us to be praying, guys. Bear with me a minute, cause yeah, there God was like, I just had Ezekiel. So it's important for us to be praying, fasting, sowing, worshiping, spending daily time with God, having a real relationship with Him. You know, the Bible says that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It also, it's talking about we are to be um, transformed by the renewing of our mind. So, guys, if you missed, um, if you missed. November 1st, November 2nd, Bible study for November. Please go back and check it out because we're just going to continue on today. Today we're going to be um, in Ezekiel 5 and Ezekiel 6. So let's start with Ezekiel 5. So, and Lord, we just thank you for blessing this time. Father God, with you, thank you for everything that you have done for us, past, present. And God, what you're presently doing, what you will do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your angels over us, God. Thank you for new blessings that you have for us on today and this week. Thank you for everything, God. Thank you for the blessings that you will allow us to be to others as well, God. And just we just honor you, God. We just, just guys, then you know something? Let's just take a minute to just thank God. Don't look at what you're going through. Don't look at what happened. We are. We need to be so thankful to God. God is so good. God keeps us from danger, seen and unseen. God is so good when it seems like it's rough or now when it seems like it's big or small when it's whatever god is so good when you could just look back just thank god let's just take a minute to thank him thank him man thank you jesus for real thank you god thank you god even if it's a sacrifice of praise thank you god thank you god thank you lord thank you god for real thank you jesus Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Not to praise God for all things, but we're supposed to praise Him in all things. You know, I don't want to get emotional. I'm just going to keep reading because, you know, I, I I don't even have to think back far. I could just think about how good God is to have been to me and how good he is to me and what he promised me and what he didn't deliver me from. Man, thank you, Jesus, for real. God is real. God is good. I'm grateful, ma'am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's so good to us, man. He's so good. And he's so good in spite of us. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's get into the reading, guys. I be mindful. I got to go get my baby and stuff and everything. But I thank you, Lord. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 5. So, um, I really don't know what this one is going to be talking about. We're kind of reading them together because I haven't read Ezekiel since like last year, I think. And you know how usually I'll tell you guys um, what it's going to be talking about. Ezekiel 6 is going to be a prophecy against the mountains of Israel um, and some other stuff. But I really don't have a like a title like how I usually have over five. So we just got to read this together. So it says, um, now son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor. Somebody say a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up the hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, because remember we talked about the siege yesterday, right? Excuse me. Burn a third of the hair with fire inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city and scatter a third to the wind. For I will pursue them with drawn swords. I want to say drawn sword. But take a few strands of hair and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. Again, verse 4 continuing on. Take 
Okay, again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire was spread from there to the whole house of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations, which with countries all around her. Yet in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations because of all your detestable idols. I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst, fathers will eat their children and children will eat their fathers. I will inflict punishment on you, right? Cannibalism, I believe that is. I will inflict punishment on you and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. This also represents famine and turmoil and judgment and all this stuff, right? So, therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices. That's almost like that quote that says, a curse without a cause will not come, right? So, um, let's keep going. Okay, detestable practices. I myself will withdraw my favor. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls. And a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue a drawn sword. Then my anger will cease and my wrath against them will subside and I will be avenged. And when I have spent my wrath upon them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you in the sight of all who pass by. You will be... Excuse me, guys. I'm still kind of a little sleepy, but I'm just going to go to sleep later on um, once it's bedtime and stuff. So you will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you when I inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my daily and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. This is what I be telling people. When God hit, he don't miss. There are some things that we don't have to worry about or deal with or try to do it in our own strength or try to pay back. No, because we could miss and then God still have to turn around and deal with us because we're saying, God, I don't trust you. I trust in my power or me getting the revenge or me getting it my way enough. Even if it's not so vindictive, just the principle of God telling you to wait on him. And you do it yourself. You say, God, I trust in me more than I trust in you. So I'm going to take the initiative and do what you told me not to do. This is why I be telling people when God hit, he don't miss. See, 16, when I shoot at you with my daily and destructive arrows of famine. Because see, we will miss because we're doing it in the carnal nature, fleshly nature. But when God does it, you know, say arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your supply of food. I will send famine and wild beasts against you and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you and I will bring the sword against you. I don't have spoken. So you have to keep in mind what's going on. I'm going to just put it really quick on here in case you missed it any other days. Look at the outline of contents. Look at the introduction, what's going on. This is an exile. There are some things going on. You know, they, 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 they are going to have hope for restoration and they're going to be restored to Palestine. You know, but right now it's going to be dealing with the sin, the judgment, all this different stuff. You know, so I'm just going to leave that here real quick. So let's get into, um, that was, um, five, chapter five. Let me know what you guys got out of that. Now we're going to jump into six. And it says, um, a prophecy against the mountains of Israel. So the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, set your face against the mountains of Israel. Prophesy against them and say, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to the mountains and hills, to the ravens and valleys. I am about to bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished, and your incense altars will be smashed, and I will slay your people in front of your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the Israelites in front of the idols, and I will scatter your bones around your altars. And just really quick, before I get into six, let me keep, let me keep going. I was going to say something. 
I'll say it after verse 8. So wherever you live, the towns will be laid waste and the high places demolished so that your altars will be laid waste and devastated. Your idols smashed and ruined. Your incense altars broken down and what you have made wiped out. Your people will fall slain among you and you will know that I am the Lord. But I will spare some for some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the lands and nations. Before we um, continue with verse 9 um, to like 14 or so, this is a word for someone. You know, it's better with God. It's not saying that you won't go through anything, but it's better with Him. It, it's, it's better on this side. It's better on this side. Everything that glitters is not gold. We cannot be, because right now my personal um, Bible reading I just finished reading Ephesians last week. So then last week I started reading John. So I pretty much finished reading John, the first first John. I just have to read John 5 and then I'm going to start second John and like read it over the next couple of days. Then I'm going to start reading Nehemiah even though we read Nehemiah before, but for me personally, I see I have to be dedicated to do the YouTube channel and everything that we're doing. That's the part of the channel, but I also make sure I, I have my personal relationship with God as well. See, these videos are for you guys to bring God the glory and for us to connect, but really, this is for you guys. So, like, personally, what I'm reading is um, 1 John right now, like 1 John going into 2 John, and... You know, it's like every time I'm reading, and I'm also like reading stuff on the Bible app and stuff, that really, really helps me as well. That helps me a lot. So, um, yeah. So, I noticed that when God is telling me to read something specifically, it's like helping me for the season that I'm in. And, and it be like so on point and so on time to me. You know what I mean? So, it's just better with God. Like, it's not saying you're not going to never go through nothing. We have victory in Christ, but... Like like John, like first John was talking about, like you can't be a friend of the world and say you belong in the light and you belong to God if you don't love God and don't love people and don't live for him, then you was basically use a liar. Because you saying you in the light, then you gotta walk in the way of the light. You gotta walk in the way of the word. You gotta believe that Jesus is who he is. Just kind of paraphrasing. You gotta believe that Jesus is who he is. You can't say, oh, I love God, but you hate your brother or the person you can see. How how could you hate the brother that you can see or the believer or the person you can see? You've never seen God before in your life and you say you love God and you hate your brother. You know, so John, um, John, what I'm getting out of John is love, walk in the light, don't, do not be um, deceived by the false prophets, um, you know, walk in the spirit. And you know that the spirit of the Antichrist, you know, I talk about that. And it's talking about, basically, you really have to live out what you preach. Or you sense something in your life not living up with it, then by the fruit. You know, like we talked about in um, the regular book of John. Not First John, Second John, but John, when we did our John series, by their fruit, you will know them. Even we've been releasing many videos on that. You know, it teaches and different stuff on that. So, you know, it's just better in the Lord. It's better in him. You know, hold on guys. This cover is just too hot. It's just better in him. And I had turned the air low, but I'm going to turn it back up. But let's um, finish this up because I really have to go get my son um, in like in a little bit. I'm going to have to go tell him to get him. So, um, and the rain kind of died down too. So, so let's pick back up nine. Then just close. So, then in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me, how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me, and by their eyes, which have lusted after their idols. See, God feels things too. You know, if we made in his image and likeness, how people feel like God don't feel things. You know, we see different characteristics and attributes about him. So... They will, um, sorry, so they will load themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices. You know, if we as a human, as human beings have, have prices and boundaries and, um, just different boundaries and like prices and standards that we will not settle for less than that, or that's our limit or that's our boundary. And we're made in the image and likeness of God. How we feel like the Lord God Almighty don't have no, no boundary, no limit, no, how we feel like that. No, so, um. 
Um, so they will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices. And they will know that I am the Lord. I did not threaten in vain to bring this calamity on them. And you heard the Lord say what he said. He said, they will know that I'm the Lord. He said this a lot of he says this a lot of times throughout the word. He said, I did not threaten in vain, which means if I said it as good as done. In Isaiah fifty five, like between verses eight through thirteen, tell us that. So if God says something, that's what it is. You know. And yes, that he could be graceful and merciful, like when he, um, Hezekiah cried out and Isaiah gave him the sentence and the word of the Lord and before he got out fully of the court. He said, you know, go back to him and tell him, you know, I have heard your prayer. I'm going to restore 15 years to your life. I didn't heard you, you know. So that's why I always encourage you guys. And I've been saying this to you guys for a very long time now. You have to be open to what God said. You have to be open to what God is saying. And you have to be open to what God will say. And if you just look through this Bible, you can see that that is true. God said some things in this Bible. God is saying some things in this Bible. And God will say something. It's like it's in steps. So it's just like certain things in your life. Like when God said something to you. He did say, he did say it to you. But then you in this now time. So God is saying something to you. But then it's going to be a time where God will say something to you. You see what I'm saying? Just like he said to Abraham. Abraham, offer your only begotten son. Off, off, offer him up for me. That is what the Lord said to Abraham. Abraham had a relationship with the Lord. He heard the Lord. The Lord heard him. So he heard the Lord tell him that. The, the word of the Lord came to him and the Lord said that to him. But then he had to be open when they said when he was about to kill his son. And he said, no, 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 don't kill him. I was just basically testing your faith. I just wanted to see if you was going to do it. No, I've provided a ram in the bush. So he had to be open to what he said. To what he was saying and to what he would say. Because Abraham, and this is just going back. We did Genesis in um, January. I just don't remember if this happened before Ishmael left or after Ishmael left. But he didn't want Ishmael to leave. The Lord, you know, we talked, we did a video talking about um, Ishmael and um, Isaac. The per the perfect will of God versus the permissible will. Per 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 permissible will. We talked about that a lot before too. But I don't know if Ishmael, it's not in front of me, and so I'm not going to look for it. I'm sorry, I want to keep reading this, but I'm just thinking, the Holy Spirit's giving this to me. I don't know if Ishmael left before he did that sacrifice or after. But anyway, the Lord was telling him when it was time for Ishmael to go, he have to, like you got to listen to your wife. You got to listen to Sarah. They have to go. Because they were trying to help God. Well, he listened to his wife to have sex with Hagar, but the Lord didn't tell him to do that. The Lord had already given them a word, and she got impatient, and she was full of like Sarah, and she was like it wasn't going to happen, but God did do it. And it was causing animosity and strife between the perfect will in the permissible will of God between the promise and I don't want to be rude when I say this versus their project see 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 Isaac was the promise of God and Ishmael was like their project because they put it together but the Lord still said he was going to bless him what he said about Ishmael you know when um, Hagar was crying out in the, the um, wilderness and I believe an angel the Lord appeared to her you know and they gave the word to her when she once when she ran away they told her to go back but then when it was time and I think there's from the die of thirst and she set the boy away was it him that cried out the angel said the Lord have heard the boys cry but then the Lord told Abraham I'm gonna bless him too he either told Abraham or Hagar it's not in front of me guys I'm sorry but he said he gonna bless him too I'm gonna make him into a great nation he said you know his brother's hands will be against him and he will be against his brother but I believe when Abraham died I believe both of them came together, didn't they? I believe. I'm not sure. But if you can look at it today. Look at Israel, which represents the promised people. And then you can look at, like, I believe Ishmael is like Iraq. Like the people of, like, Iraq. And like the people of Islam. And you can look and see how, even to this day, it's still, like, you know, even if you look like when we talked about it, when we did a Joseph series and we read about Joseph, and I have this 24 minutes, I we did a Joseph series. Look at the people that he was sold to that was going down. It's like 
I'm not saying that there was they're part of the Ishmael people, but I'm just saying like yes, let me let me um just keep going. All right, so let me let me see could I put this phone back on the charger because I don't want it to cut off on me like it did yesterday. Because that had kind of threw me. All right, guys, I'm, I'm gonna have to get off of here. Let's quickly um close with this, guys. But I hope someone got something out of today's Bible study. So let's just do 11 on. So this is what, excuse me, the Sovereign Lord says. Strike your hands together and stamp your feet and cry out alas. Because, excuse me, of all the wicked and detestable practices of the house of Israel. For they will fall by the sword, famine, and plague. He that is far away will die of the plague. And he that is near will fall by the sword. And he that survives in his spirit will die of famine. So I will spend my wrath upon them, and they will know that I am the Lord when their people lie slain among their idols around their altars, on every high hill, and on all the mountaintops, under every spreading tree, and every leafy oak. This is a, a um, symbolic place. It's not just a regular spreading tree or leafy oak, because look, places where they offer fragrant incense to all their idols. So they worship these idols here, under these places. So, and I will stretch out my hand against them and make the land a desolate waste from the desert to Dibla. Dibla, I guess, in the bottom says, um, most Hebrew manuscripts, a few Hebrew manuscripts says, Ribla, wherever they live, then they will know that I am the Lord. And yet tomorrow, I'm about to say yesterday, Lord, tomorrow, Lord's will, Ezekiel 7, we're going to talk about the end has come and idolatry in the temple. That'll be day four for chapter seven and eight. But you guys be blessed. Have a great day.